Today's the big day when we move into the office, but we've got no lighting and the pressure's on to get all of the light fittings out in this space. We've got a ton of exciting, beautiful light fittings to go in here. We're gonna share with you the whole process, so let's get into it. So we've gone with Philips Lighting for this whole project and a massive thanks to Signify Philips for sponsoring this video. They've provided all the lighting for these various spaces and they've helped us do a bespoke design so that our lighting is perfect in this building. So we've gone with these LED linear fittings, we've got track fittings going in with these beautiful 3D printed domes going in as well, and then LED panels throughout the generic spaces, all with DALI controls as well, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So I'm gonna hand you over to the team who are busy installing. Right, so we're fixing uh, the linears up today and we're using these. So these are grip it fixings. I don't know if you guys have seen them, but we use them quite a lot when we can't get a, a decent fixing in plasterboard. Um, these ones take up to 71 kilos, but some of them go up to like 113 kilos per fixing, which is pretty good. Uh, so I've just given uh, Luke a 16 mil wood bit. So you just bore it out with that. And then, yeah, you screw them in and these wings come out and then we can get the gripples on the ceiling, hang the gripples, which is basically wire, and then that's what the track lights hang off. So yeah, you're gonna start getting them in whilst me and Ian are setting out all the other fixing points and hopefully we can start getting some lights on. So we'll just get it all set out and you can just follow behind us. Yeah. And then we'll start dropping all the hangers. Cool. They'll all be hanging and then it will be two three man job actually yeah. getting the linears up. So these are the gripples, basically the hangers from Philips. What we've got here is a yeah, little mount basically. And then there's just a bit of wire that comes out and it goes down to these which clip onto the fittings and then these are adjustable so you can pull through and it won't come out. Um, you can unscrew this and lengthen them as well. Um, but yeah, these are quite nice. They're just all black finish. Normally you have the sort of silver gripple um, on most of these fittings. But yeah, these will look pretty nice having the, yeah, the black wires, the black cable and stuff like that. So here in the YouTube studio, we've got something a little bit different. We're using the Philips Interact lights. Now, Interact is a bit like Philips Hue, but for commercial industrial setups. So it all uses the Interact app. I've created a space for the studio and I'm gonna click add lights. And then it's literally gonna scan the area for lights so that it can add to the system. Okay, so we've got six lights appeared. I can just click add on all of them like that, and it's gonna add them to the space. If I click test, it should allow me to switch them all off. There we go, and switch them all on with my phone. Pretty cool, and it includes dimming, so we'll be able to change some of the settings and choose lighting levels later. The loading bay lights that we've got have got built-in PIR sensors, but in here we're just gonna use a switch because actually we don't want a PIR. The reason being, if we're filming in here, we don't want somebody to move and the lights to all come on. We've got controlled studio lighting in here for when we're filming, so we just wanna be able to turn them off or on depending on what is happening in the room. Um, so I'm just gonna click on controls, and then I'm gonna click switches, I'm going to click add switch and then in here it's got a double rocker switch which is what I've got. Identify the switch by pressing and holding the indicated buttons for 10 seconds and there we go, confirm identification. Press the two indicated buttons at the same time and release. So we do that. Next tap confirmed. Switch joined, give the switch a name. Studio switch. There we go, test the switch, press the on off button on the switch is one of the lights in the group turning on or off. So let's do, oh yeah, there we go. One of our lights is turning on and off. To configure the switch, we, we can choose what we want the four buttons to do. So um, the, the buttons on the left are configurable, so we can do on or off, um, but if we want, we can change it to create like a scene. We could choose to have, say scene one, would be all of the lights down to 20%. Deploy the settings, and it's gonna deploy the settings that we've made in the phone to the lights so that they all work as we expect. So now if this works as it should, and I press one, it should dim us to 20%. There we go. Two is 60%. One is fully on, and zero is off. Boom. That is pretty impressive. 
So this is our linear track, basically. It's literally just like a buzz bar system. So you've got a live and a neutral running through here, and then the lights can clip in at any point and pick up a feed. We're gonna connect them up using these live ends. So these clip in the end, that allows you to terminate a cable in there. The end caps go on the other end. Again, they just clip in super easy. And then if there is more than one three meter length, then you have these joiners, which again, just clip in and extend that that bus bar basically. Uh, the fixings that we spoke about earlier, these, these gripple fixings, so they can either slide on or you can just sort of clip them on like that. Um, and then they're not moving. So we'll probably inset the first ones like 100 mil or so from the end and then they'll be every meter after that. If it's clipped, there we go. Yeah, that's the one. Well, that's pretty much it, right in the end. Cool. And then it should be a meter to your next point. But it's just so these are just going to clip wherever they are. Yeah, but then what if it's not straight? Oh, yeah, true. And then you're going to have to unclip Clip it. Up. Do they just slide, surely, don't they? They do, yeah. but shoot for the stars, aim for the moon, sort of thing. <laughs> just roughly, do you know what I mean? But yeah. if you bang your thumb on it, then we know. So they clip in and then yeah. clip in again, do they? Or... Yeah, like clips in one side, but then you have to like, probably push it down and clip again hard. Right, so you happy with that, yeah? Yeah. So we've been using these grip it fixings, but we've found on a couple of them, it's just coincidence. As soon as you try putting them in, it's hit a bit of wood. So obviously you can't get this in past the past the passport layer because these wings won't open. So we're having to use longer screws as well and drill into the wood above it. So these are the Philips core line projectors really nice high quality track mounted spotlights. They're 25 watts, but they give out a really nice amount of light. And we're gonna get some of these clicked up into our tracks. So we literally just pop that into the track like that, it clicks, then we flick that open, and then there's a switch which you basically twist. You can have three different switch lines in this track, but it's got Dali built into the track as well. So if you've got Dali dimmable track fittings, you can Dali control each individual fitting on the track. So uh, we didn't realise, we thought it was going to be like traditional like shop lighting almost, but we've actually got pendants coming off of these tracks. Um, just us not looking at the drawings basically. But what we're doing now is we're moving this track up to the tray height, the top of the tray, so that we can have a bit of length on the pendants, so that the pendants sit at the bottom of that AC unit, that's our like height for the light fittings. So now we're just trying to raise it up to the height it should be at so that we can do that. A little bit higher. One more of them, mate, and you'll be bang on. Uh, yeah, you're there, to be fair, when you put, that's it, yeah. Okay, that's that track um, all put up. So we've just got another track here. See, I've already started with two. Yeah, we've got another track that goes all the way across here. And then we should have two more pendants as well hanging from this area. Yeah, I reckon that looks about right. And for the distribution of light and everything as well, it will be make sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay, point of no return. How many is there of those? Just two of these, I oh, think. Oh, just two? Yeah. Right, so these are one of the many fittings we're, we're hanging off our track. So what's cool about these is they're actually 3D printed, which means they're just really light. The heaviest thing in there will be the Dali driver. Um, and yeah, I think there's some quite nice light output on these as well. These fittings are Dali, so we've basically got a live, a neutral, and earth, and then we've got two Dali cores. That's why we've got five cores running down here. And then we've got this braid in here as well, which is just for strength, really. So I've just got this tightened into the clamp. Um, yeah, not going anywhere, because again, we're relying on this as our, our point of suspension. We've basically got three terminals. We've got live, neutral, and then earth. So these are a bit unorthodox, to be honest with you. You'd probably only get away with this on a light fitting, but you basically just push the insulation into there, and it's like a V, and then you put the cable in there, and it pierces the insulation, and then makes contact. You just want to poke it in, and then grab something like a screwdriver, just force it in and you can see there it's chewed up the insulation and gripped it very similar to like a rj45 socket um you know a punch down tool with the data cores very similar to that but just for the lighting um, and that's how we pick up that connection you just got this sort of cover that clips on makes up the rest of the plug and then we've got this spare compartment in here so this bit's pretty tricky but this is the dali connection so we've basically got to get this in there 
and then there's a couple of terminations to make off here. So you kind of have to leave enough slack so that this can spin. When it goes into the track, you've got to spin this and lock it on. So I'll try and show you. That sits in there and then it, to get it in, you would have it like that. Once you plug it into the track, you then need to spin it so that these pins make contact with the Dali rails. We'll get these stripped and twisted. So we're doing um, black as a positive and grey as a negative. So I want my Dali neutral, my Dali negative to go in there. Get that nice and tight. Get the Dali live and the Dali positive into there. Make that off. Just give them a double check, make sure they ain't going anywhere. And then we've got to try and fold these in in such a way where we can actually get this closed. So it's very fiddly. We'll get that sat where we need it to be. And then we just want to sort of keep our thumb on it and make sure that that can spin, which it can, and then it can shut. So we've got that together and then we've basically got that mechanism there, which is what I was on about. So this particular fitting is shown just off the, the desk. Make sure your pins are in. And then we just want to line it up roughly, lock these on either side and then now that can't come out it's positioned pretty much where we want it bar some minor adjustments and uh yeah it's as simple as that uh, as you can see we're back to the first track we installed and we're having to lower it down now just because on the other side of the room where we've installed the second track it will hit the tray where the AC is running, all the cables flat. So what we're gonna do is just gonna lower this one down just to keep them at the same level. So these are the Philips high bay lights that we're fitting. So we've just got two of these in this sort of loading area just to really illuminate this space. We've just fitted them with jack chain, pretty standard stuff. Uh, they're on plugs, so easy to maintain. If you did need to change this, you can just unplug that and they're kicking out 73 watts, so they're nice and bright, but these do have the built-in sensors, the occupancy sensors, so if no one's in the loading area, they'll go off, they'll dim down and then eventually go off, and then when people walk under them, they'll come on a little bit, and if it knows someone's there for a prolonged period of time, they'll then, um, yeah, go up to full brightness, but yeah, it's super bright down there now, and uh, yeah, they're pretty nice fittings. So now that all the light fittings are installed, we've got Ollie here from Chile Electrical who's helped us with the Dali lighting control side of things. We're using LOX1 on this project, something that I've never used before. Ollie's a bit of a pro at it, so we're going to start programming. So we've got this amazing uh, Hilti set. They sent it to us in preparation for a special event that we're going to, but it's all like the really nice Vera stuff, but it's rebranded Hilti. And we're going to use some of these to actually take these lights apart. I can throw my Bosch set in the bin. <laughs> For general lighting throughout the suspended ceilings, we've used the EcoLink LED panels, which are available in 600 by 600, 1200 by 600, and 300 by 1200. They are superb fittings for this kind of situation because you can easily add an emergency lighting module to convert it into an emergency fitting, or a Dali dimming module to make it Dali dimmable, and they're readily available at all your usual wholesalers. At the moment, this room is just permanently on. We were waiting for some Dali drivers from Philips, so now we've got them. I'm just gonna get these onto the system. So this is the existing fixed current driver for the LED panel. And then Philips have sent us just a slightly different version, which has a Dali connection on the incoming. So it's just a case of swapping these over and then we can program them in. So this is the My Creations Dome series. These are beautiful. They've got the champagne color on the inside. So these lights are 3D printed from recycled plastic. And the 3D printing element enables you to choose a bespoke light fitting that could be like one of a kind, choose all of the colors and features of that particular light fitting. And it means that Philips don't need to have thousands of SKUs in stock in a warehouse somewhere. They can literally print the lights to order. It enables the supply chain to be a lot more sustainable because rather than having loads of stock, which can quickly go out of date, you basically print to order. It's like print on demand, but for lighting. This is the My Creations Drum series. So like the domes, but a little bit smaller and more compact. 
And again, 3D printed, totally flexible in what you can do with it in terms of the finishes and stuff. And it is a 19.4 watt LED in there. So nice and bright, but with a Dali, we can dim it down to exactly the kind of light level that we want. So why have we decided to go down the DALI lighting route? Actually, what does DALI mean? It stands for Digital Addressable Lighting Interface. And it basically means that every single light fitting has its own unique address and you can control it individually. Now, why would we go with a system like that here? Well, because office environments tend to change over time. We might move desks around. We might wanna change the way that the lights work. Certain lights being on and off at certain times, dimming, lighting reacting to ambient light outside etc it's a way for us to be able to have the lighting system being really flexible to change it over time and also it means that we can save energy because we can set the lights to only be on in certain areas when they're needed so now it's scanning all of the devices connected to that two core dali cable from the control panel downstairs so we've got about four lcms that have these Dali connections. So that's this area and then the ones we've just added. So even the kitchen LED strip, they should all appear now. I'm expecting about 25 devices. No. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's working. So now we've got all of our locks on devices added. We've got uh, three sensors and three keypads. So now I'm going to create three lighting function blocks and then connect all those devices to the blocks. So we're gonna have one for our boardroom, one for the office area, and one for this collaborative space. So in this case, we need to now go through and address all of the Dali devices. In this room, I think we've got like 15 alone. So once we've done that, we can then connect those together and then the lighting block will automatically use logic for monitoring the lux level, if there's people in the room with the presence sensor and then also interaction with the keypad and adjust the lighting brightness levels accordingly. So in the plant room, we can turn those lights on, boom, and we need to add a PIR sensor. Again, these are Interact Pro, and we've got this wireless PIR that we're gonna connect in, so that essentially, if anyone walks into this plant room, these lights are just gonna come on. So if we go to controls in here, sensors, add sensor, and then we're gonna go for a battery-powered regular sensor, I think, by the looks of it. Remove the tab, and then, Identifying the sensor, there we go, and that's it. Now we just call it plant room PIR. The zone is gonna be plant room. We're gonna add occupancy sensing, turn the group on and off, save, got it. Deploy the settings, so that's all done. So that's it, a beautiful bright office with amazing LED lighting. Thanks so much to Signify for sponsoring today's video. If you want to find out more about their products, there'll be a link below. But either way, hope you've enjoyed this lighting deep dive. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's really worth doing. We've got loads of cool content coming for you guys. But either way, we'll see you on the next one.